Hello, this is Bob Jackson. I'm the K-12 educational liaison for the Prison Project here at Rose Holman. Today I'm uh, coming to you to discuss and show how to do a couple uh, Moodle applications, particularly m games that you can integrate into your course courses to help engage students and give them uh, a little bit of a fun activity to review for quizzes or test. Uh, previous to this, I have done two other informational videos on games. There are six games that can be in integrated at this time uh, on your Moodle course. Okay, if you want to see the games that I've already discussed, uh, the games that I previously discussed were crossword and hidden hidden picture. Hidden picture seems to be, to me anyway, the most complicated. Um, game to integrate into a course just because you got to have the settings on it set up correctly particularly using a glossary uh, that's feeding you the terms the questions for the game okay if you want to go back to some of these when you sign into prism and you're on the login page here you come over to the right hand side here you go to this block help and extras block and if you click on videos and tutorials you will see my informational videos here okay and they're in the order that I have made these okay from an introductory one to uh, some course authoring and mastery learning type settings to do on the course and then where we'll get into actual Moodle applications and, and uh, things that you can integrate into your courses okay the crossword game and the hidden picture game were the two other games I've done in these previous videos. What I'm going to do in this video here is the Sudoku and the uh, Cryptex games. Okay, so let's go back out. Okay, and I'm going to go to my first year chemistry course. Okay, now then, before you can add these games, you need to go up to the right hand, upper right hand corner of your course and make sure you have to turn editing on. Okay, and then you come down to the section of your course that you want to add the game or games to. Okay, I'm going to Unit 1, and you'll come down here to add an activity or resource. And you will select the game that you want to add, which we're going to do the Sudoku and the um, Cryptex. Okay, and I'm going to start with Cryptex. Okay, so you'd click on this. Okay, it will open up a page that looks like this. I'm using one that I've already got my terms and all. Um, already put it populated in there so I don't have to type as I talk this and I can make a little bit shorter video okay so this is the settings this is where we're setting up a cryptex okay so in the title box here you would put a title for your game which I I have cryptex this could be like cryptex unit one okay um, that would be your choice to um, you know make on that okay you can put some instructions for your students here on how to do this activity probably with the very first one they ever do you probably have to provide more instruction once they learn how to do the cryptexes then you probably won't have to put as much okay if you put instructions here and you want it to appear on the front page of your course so they read it before they open the um, game up then you want to be sure and check this box here okay if you don't check this box you can still put instructions here it's just they will not see the instructions until they click on the game to open it okay so that's up to you okay on all the games you had to have a source of questions you can either use a glossary a qu questions from your question banks or you can use one of your quiz activities okay I'm going to use the glossary again on this one I like the glossary on, uh, on many of these because my glossaries can have um, just vocabulary, okay, and essentially definitions, which is typically best for something like the cryptex. Okay, now then, if you don't know what a cryptex is, and I guess I probably should talk at first, the crypte cryptex in these is, is like a word search. Looks just exactly like a word search where they have hidden words in a word search. And it works a little bit backwards in that they're going to answer questions, and as they answer the questions, 
then they'll populate the words into the crypt text. Okay, now they can go right in and kind of circle or see the words on the crypt text, but then they're going to have to answer the questions to get the points right, and it shouldn't match up with that. So uh, that'd be up to the students. That's where they could find the terms, but then they're going to have to get it matched with the uh, the questions or the vocabulary type terms. Okay, so I'm going to use glossary. If you click on glossary, then you're going to see that you come right here and you're going to select which glossary in your course. And I highly recommend on these games that you create a glossary for each of your different games. Okay, or at least for each one of your different units on your course. Okay, um, so, the, so the terms go with the unit that you're working on at the time rather than one big glossary for your course. Okay, so I, I, would, I would select that. Now if you select questions from question banks instead when you when you click on this then you're going to, have to come down here and you're going to have to find the question bank you want to use okay you'd have to pick you'd want to pick one that's appropriate for the unit you're working on those question banks you build yourself and goes with either your quizzes or your test okay now then one thing you can see on these it'll tell you how many questions are in each of your question banks in the parentheses here, like this biochemistry exam here has 36 questions. Okay, this general chemistry one here, default for general, it only has five. That probably wouldn't be a very good one to choose to use for any of your games because the number of questions aren't high enough. Okay, you, you probably want some that have more questions in them. Okay, um, so then that's it. Then, then you can also select up here instead of glossary or questions, you can go quiz and this will pull up all the quiz activities whether it be actual quizzes or exams that you have on your course and pull questions from those so then you come down here to this drop down and you can select which one you want to use okay I'm going to use glossary okay so I use glossary I have unit one games glossary okay my glossary is matched with my game I come down here maximum number of attempts I've got a high number here. I put six because I'm playing right when it when you reach your limit on them, it won't let you play it anymore. Okay, you probably want to put five or less. Okay, but that's totally up to you. However many attempts you want to give your students on it, typically most are going to want to give more than one so they can review. Okay, they're getting ready for a test or a quiz or whatever probably. Okay. Disable summarize. Okay, when they're done, they're going to get a summary of their game. You can choose whether you want it disabled or you want it enabled. I'm going to make it no. Okay, I, in other words, it's going to be enabled. Okay, show high school scores. Okay, for however many number of students I've got for the top three students. Okay, the high scores for the three. It'll give the students names and then their score. Okay, uh, and that way they get bragging rights or whatever. Okay, come to grade. You can select. You want to select where you're gonna, where the grade's gonna go. Whether it's going in assignments or quizzes or whatever on your course, your grade categories. Grade to pass. Okay, if you want to sign this, because this is if you do um, some of the restrictions on some of your different activities and so forth, in order for them to pass this and be able to go on to your next step. Uh, you can put a pass here or you can leave it blank. Okay, maximum grade, this will be the total points it's worth. Okay, for your grade book. Okay, grading method, I've got average grade. You can go highest grade, average grade, last attempt, or first attempt. Okay, that actually hits the grade book. Okay, that's up to you. I, I picked average grade. Okay, now then, Cryptex options. Okay, you want to, this is a, the most important on here, okay? These are the settings for the actual crypt text itself, okay? This is where you're setting the size of the word search, the crypt text. Okay, I've got 10 columns, 10 rows, so it's a nice square. You can, you can make this however big you want, and you'll play around with this to see. 10 is pretty good size, you'll see mine here in a minute, okay? Here you pick the minimum number of words, I say five, and then maximum number of words in the cryptex, I've got ten. You can make it whatever you want. Just to realize it gets pretty busy if you get a too high a number. 
allow space in the words. It's very important here. If you have, like in my glossary, I have things like chemical change, physical change, okay? Where there are more than one word, that means there's gonna be spaces in the words. If you do not click yes here, then it's gonna error on you when the students go trying to play the game. Okay, so just be aware of that. So I have yes. Maximum number of tries, I've got three, well, maximum uh, tries, I've got three, I'm gonna take that up to six, okay? Um, to match what I had up here, okay? Now then, maximum compute time and seconds, I find two works good enough for me. You can play with this too, but uh, it, it shouldn't be a very high number, okay? Header and footer options. This is where you can customize the cryptic somewhat, giving it a title, giving some instruction or what, whatever you want as far as that. Okay, you can do at the at the bottom of the cryptic or at the bottom of the cryptic or at the top of it. And then uh, common module settings. Most of you're going to leave this way. It is if you're using groups in your class, you can assign this to groups. And then restrict access. This is where you can add the restrictions to where. If you want them to finish these other exercises before they can do this, then you can do that setting here. Okay, so let's save this, and I'll show you the game. Okay, here's your cryptex. If I click on it, there it is. Okay, now what the students will do, they'll just go down through and answer these questions. Like on the first one, it says the mass per unit volume of a substance or a material. I'm going to answer it here. That would be density, and you will see it's going to appear in the crypt text. Okay, and then I go to the next one the property of a substance, usually a metal that gives it the ability to be drawn into a wire. Well, I believe that's ductility, and you'll see and there they are. Okay, that's the crypt text game. Okay, now then let's go back out. I want to show you the uh, next game, Sudoku. It's a very similar to the way you set it up. I mean, it's just a Sudoku instead of a cryptex. Okay. Okay, let's go to the Sudoku. Okay, on Sudoku, Sudoku has a very similar settings as with the cryptex. Okay, um, when you go into the settings, Okay, you're going to put your title up here, and like I say, Sudoku, Unit 1. Okay, you can do just like on the other one, put instructions here for how to do the Sudoku. If you want it to appear on the front page, be sure and click this box right here. Otherwise, I will not see those instructions until you open the uh, game. Okay, then here's you're going to select, just like before, Glossary, Question, or Quiz. I'm selecting glossary. Okay, if you select questions or quiz, remember you're going to come to these drop down menus here to select actually where your questions come from. Okay, I'm using a unit one games glossary. Okay, now then, the one thing I don't know whether I said on the other, uh, only approved uh, or teacher's glossary entries, I go yes here. Okay, most of the time. Because if you have a glossary you allow students to put in terms, you could actually get some that you don't know that they're necessarily correct. Okay, so I'd be careful on this. Okay, I'd put here if you're using this for a grade. Okay, come down here. I'm going to maximum number of attempts. I'm going to take this up just because of my plan around here. If I've already done it three times, so I won't be able to access it at the end. You can put this at whatever level you want. Okay, uh, usually want to give them if you're letting them review for a quiz or test, but doing these. You want to give them a number of attempts besides just one. Okay, I'm showing high score of three students just like on the other. Okay, uh, you can have a summary when they're done or not. Okay, uh, by choosing here. Grades just like before. Okay, be sure and assign your grades. Okay, and then the most important options down here are the Sudoku options. Okay, and this is where you're going to put the maximum number of questions that you'll have on the Sudoku. Okay, uh, I put 15. You can make that whatever you want. 20, 25, 10. Okay, make it what you want. Okay, header, footer options. This is where you can customize it. 
put uh, a title or instructions or what have you at the top or the bottom of your Sudoku. Okay, and then you got common module setting just like on the other ones and restrict access. Okay, and if I go save and return, I'm going to go out to my game. Okay, here's Sudoku, and I open it up, and I'm looking. Yours won't show that, it'll go right to this. It's because I've been into it more than once. And then now on these, you have your Sudoku here, and you'll notice these are these are A10, these are the questions. What you're going to do, you're going to populate the numbers in, okay, which will help them solve the Sudoku. Okay, so like on this first one, it says a physical change of a solid directly to a gas without forming a liquid first. Okay, that's sublimation. Okay, so when I do that, then you will see that these numbers, as I answer questions, I've already answered some on this before I started here. I think this one was here. Then you'll see numbers will populate into the Sudoku to help them solve it. Okay, if I go to A11, A11 is right here. Okay, the amount of matter in a substance. That would be mass, okay? And if I do that, see, the numbers come in. And that's doing the Sudoku. Okay, once they get all their questions, then they can finish the Sudoku by putting the numbers in these boxes here. Okay, that's it. And that should be a wrap as far as these two games. If you have questions uh, or need further uh, explanation on some of these or having difficulty setting some, uh, some of them up, please let me know, and I'll try to help you in any way I can. Uh, I'd like to see some videos from some uh, teachers out there of some of the things that you're doing. Please uh, submit them to me, uh, at least a URL, so as we could uh, also add them to our collections. Have a good week at school. That's a wrap.